की भी है ग्यारह पंद्रह में गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम टू द सेशन फॉर एंटरप्रेनरशिप दैट इज एम एम टी सी जीरो टूडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट डायमेंशन ऑफ एंटरप्रेनरशिप आउट ऑफ द फोर फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन द एंटरप्रेनर इज द मोस्ट क्रूशियल एंड सेंट्रल ऑफ द प्रोडक्शन प्रोसेस इट असेस इज द गैप दैट इज द अपॉर्चुनिटी बिटवीन द डिमांड for the product or services and their suppliers and brings the three factors of production that is land labor and capital together and takes the risk different schools of economics have different thoughts and have defined entrepreneurs in different ways and uh, which can be divided into the following three groups that is the classical theories these theories mainly discuss entrepreneur as a producer and distributor of product and services second one is neo classical theories where the entrepreneurs take note of the diminishing marginal productivity of other factors of production and diversify the market to control the diminishing marginal utility of products and the third one is austrian theories these theories mainly concentrate on what entrepreneurs do on the basis of their knowledge of the market to improve demand and productivity entrepreneurship is seen as an opportunity for employment and income generation which ultimately contribute in enhancing economic growth the classical neo classical and austrian market processes theories are not different from each other but complement each other to make the economic theory more holistic in explaining entrepreneurship the importance of entrepreneurship in countries growth and development many organizations are creating international entrepreneurship index one such effort is the global entrepreneurship monitor report it internationally assesses 50 countries for the conditions of entrepreneurs in the year 2021 22 united arab emirates netherlands finland and india ranked in the top 4 now social entrepreneurship in short we call it as se integrates the basic philosophy of commercial entrepreneurship activity as identification of an opportunity mobilization of resources and organizing venture to achieve a social motive that is eradicate poverty women's education etc contrary to a commercial entrepreneur its primary objective is not to earn profit but to achieve a social objective one needs to have a concise social awareness deep empathy for the cause and a willingness to work for improving the situation to become a social entrepreneur the sc needs to involve local prospective beneficiaries as well as the other local influential people who can co participate in the change programs of social entrepreneurship by the department of science and technology the department of science and technology has several programs such as strengthening up skilling and nurturing local innovations for like the short we call it as three program second one is capacity building of community based organizations cbs ngos knowledge institutions and social startups technology interventions for disabled and elderly and many as per the company law 2030 the corporate sector also need to spend 2% of their profit on their corporate social responses that is known as csr many firms spend csr money on social enterprises rural enterprises rural as the means any entrepreneurial activity related to agriculture or non agriculture based in rural areas 
it has a special significance in India. Due to in 2021, about 65% of the total population lives in rural areas in India. As per the Agricultural Census 2015-16, 85% of the farmers in India are small and market. The nature of agriculture is seasonal and thus agriculture employment is not also throughout the year and earning from agriculture does not affect sufficient income to the farmers. Farmers are already entrepreneurs as they plan agricultural activities for the coming agricultural season, implement their plan, produce and sell their agriculture products. Farmers may also concentrate on organic farming which is a high return Nikkei market and is continuously growing. There is a possibility in the rural non-agriculture sector as well, comprising labor-intensive products or a segment of production processes where other inputs are also easily available. Programs of rural entrepreneurship by the Ministry of Rural Development Government of India. They started two programs the Startup Village Entrepreneurship Program, that is SVE, and Rural Self Employment Training Institutes. Then comes Women Entrepreneurship. In the present scenario, women owned businesses are one of the fastest growing segments of entrepreneurship throughout the world. They are making significant contribution to innovation, employment, and income generation across economics. Women in developed economies are more likely to start businesses out of opportunities, motivation, while those in less economies are motivated by necessities. Women may be illiterate, women's teaching and driving, and on the other spectrum, may be a professional, engineer, doctor, or a lawyer. Women are nearly one third more likely to start businesses out of necessity than men. So, women entrepreneurship may be related to women's empowerment. Programs of women entrepreneurship by various government departments in India. First one is Mudra Loan for Women, which was launched a program for funding up to 10 lakhs to the women owned small and micro enterprises. Bank or Microfinance Institute. Second one, Annapurna scheme. The government of India offers a loan of rupees 50,000 to women entrepreneurs who are in food catering businesses under Annapurna Yojana. Third one is Stree Shakti Yojana. Under the Stree Shakti Yojana, women entrepreneurs are provided with an interest concession of 0.05% on loans more than two languages. Then the fourth one is Dena Shakti scheme. Under the Dena Shakti scheme, women entrepreneurs are provided loans for agriculture, manufacturing, retail stores, or any other small venture. The next type of entrepreneurship is group entrepreneurship. Here, leadership is transformed from one individual who may have come up with the idea to the organized group of like-minded people and generally with different qualities to initiate and implement or if already implemented at a small scale than to scale up the initiatives. As all members have different capabilities, group leadership contributes to higher productivity and leads to the fast pace of industrial development. The salient features of group entrepreneurship are the leadership may be transferred to an expert from the owner of the enterprise. Nowadays, the market has become so competitive that it is always better if a different person is taking care of different aspects of the enterprise. There are two types of group entrepreneurship. The first one is highly technologically advanced and sophisticated. And the second one, it is managed by self-help. 
programs of group entrepreneurship by various governments, departments, and corporations. Government of India is promoting self help groups among the lower segment of the society for their socio economic development through being their anti document. It has two components that is, National Rural Livelihood Mission and National Urban Livelihood. Strategic entrepreneurship and entrepreneurship. The combination of entrepreneurship with a strategy for competitive advantage and detailed plan for a better performance of the organizations. A strategic entrepreneur searches the area first for a competitive advantage and then strategically manages resources to exploit the advantage. Strategic management is organizing the whole production process from innovation to taking it to the market for customers in pursuit of achieving certain pre-decided objectives to achieve in a competitive environment. There are two behaviors of strategic entrepreneurship. The first is the opportunity seeking and the second one is advantage seeking. Both do not work simultaneously, but one by one. As the figure depicts, we have two types of strategic entrepreneurship that is opportunity seeking behavior, and the second one is advantage seeking. But it results in superior firm performance and creation of techno entrepreneurship. Techno entrepreneurship drive technological change or bring new technological breakthroughs to create new combinations of inputs or minimize resources used and to reach the customer in more efficient way to ultimately maximize profit. Technology has a very important role in the production process and the entrepreneur has an advantage if he has the ability to adapt the existing technology as per the need or can innovate up to perform a particular function. Programs of techno entrepreneurship by the various government departments and other organizations. Although there are many, but we will be talking about the main ones. SAM Fund. SAM Fund has been created to help startups using high end technologies and preferably owned by women to scale up through a mentor circle which consists of industry startups. Second one is National Entrepreneurship Network. This was established in 2008 with the objective to set up an entrepreneurial ecosystem in Tier 1 and Tier 2 academic campuses. Third one is NASCOM Initiative. Since its inception, the NASCOM has developed and successfully completed various programs in Bangalore Chennai and Delhi. It has partnered with the government of Karnataka to set up a 50,000 square feet start up warehouse that is next gen come and accelerated in Bangalore, one of the first few in the world. Then comes your education, knowledge, and knowledge. There may be two meanings of it that is, the entrepreneurship of education activities and education of entrepreneurship. The first type, entrepreneurship of educational activities is quite independent, lucrative, but at the same time, quite responsible. The second type is about teaching and mentorship to prepare aspirants for entrepreneurship. Model right to education, rules regarding education and knowledge and there are certain restrictions on for-profit educational institutions in India due to the rules and norms such as right to free and compulsory education rules and to the Supreme Court verdicts and the third one is board norms for affiliation. Now we move to entrepreneurship in India. That is block two and we will be starting with unit four that is entrepreneurship and government policies. 
India is gradually on its mission to build a robust entrepreneurship ecosystem to develop MSMEs. MSME sector contributes in social economic development of the country. India opted for a policy of development of the micro, small, and medium sector, along with a heavy industrial sector. To facilitate the rapid development of this sector, the government, in pursuance of its policies, has initiated various support measures from time to time, which included policy of innovation, revision of investment ceilings, modernization, technological upgradation, marketing assistance, fiscal initiatives, and many more. What is institutional interface? This refers to a part of economic environment and business consisting of authorities and institutions which, whose decisions and activities influence activities of various business units. The institution could be a governmental, a statutory, a semi-autonomous or a non-profit organization and associations. The authorities are generally governmental and in sense few governmental powers currently them in specific field or activities. The institutional interface that we describe here is related to micro, small, and medium sector of industries and business in India. A business or industrial unit, enterprise in short, or quality, interacts with the institutional interface essentially at three stages in its development, such as inception, that is the establishment of an enterprise. Second one is day-to-day -day operations, which mean day-to-day -day management. And the third one is expansion and or diversification. The question is, how do policies and activities of the institutions provide assistance, resources, and technical advice to the entrepreneurs? The aim is to set up a micro, small, medium, and the term micro, small, and medium enterprise covers a range consisting of micro, small, and medium units, small businesses, and service establishments. They are all referred as MSMEs. Now, what is the industrial policy regulation and other components? For the major environment, after attaining independence in 1947, India adopted an economic plan as a method to achieve economic growth. The pattern of planning that comes to be accepted was of mixed economic, meaning thereby that industrial units in the public and private sectors would both be operating to meet the goals of economic development. The mixed nature of economic meant that on crucial areas the policy of the government was decisive and change therein were of great relevance to industry units. From the field of industry, government's objectives and intentions were announced through six successive industrial policy regulations or statements. These regulations were announced in 1948, 56, 77, 80, 1991. In 1997, there was a major upward revision in the investment load in the plant and machinery for the purpose of defining SSI and tiny sector units. In August 2000, comprehensive policy package for SSIs and tiny sector was announced, which has had a remarkable impact on the development of this, keeping in view the provision of this policy. With effect from October 2001, the investment ceiling in plant and machine in respect of 41 items covering two broad groups of hosiery and hand tools was enhanced to five groups. A separate Ministry of Small Scale Industries and Agro and Agro and Rural Industries came into being in October 
1990 with the passage of time government decides how to expand it how to they can work collaboratively the ministry was bifurcated into two separate ministries namely ministry of small scale industries and ministry of agro and rural industries that was in 2001 The function of the ministry includes the setting up of network of institutions to render services of varying nature like technical, economic, and medical experts, training, testing facilities, marketing assistance, etc. A ministry attached of this name, Small Industry Development Organization, and National Small Industries Corporation (NSIC). what looks and they looks after the implementation of policies and various programs schemes for providing infrastructure and support services to small enterprises the micro small and medium enterprise development act 2006 was enacted on october 2nd october 2006 which fulfilled long cherished demand of this it aims is to enhance and promote the competitiveness of MSMEs apart from giving legal strength to the definition of micro small and medium enterprises and this also acts contains panel provision related to the delay payment to the enterprises IPR 1956 the second IPR was announced against the background of a border second five year plan with a long term strategy for industrial and economic as regards the small exercise sector the resolution and disaster at twelve that is manufacturer of consumer goods such as cloth and manufacturer of component of newly established industry as a part of program for long term industrial development. Next IPR was in 1977. It was announced after a lapse of two decades almost. First was the multi-sided industrial development that includes large, medium, and small scale industries, and had become more of an urban phenomenon. And others was large scale unemployment. The issue of urban and rural educated and uneducated unemployed had started becoming difficult. In 1990, another idea came that was in June. Its basic aim was to introduce measures of economic liberalisation, simplified rules and procedures with a view to enhancing the technological base of industry and accomplishing higher levels of output. It gave a specific emphasis on the SSI and SSE sector. where employment opportunities were likely to be high in order to enable the ssi units to update their technology investment limit of ssi was raised to be 60 lakhs industrial policy statement of 1991 the industry that that was announced in 1991 and it contained a special trust on the promotion and spreading of small tiny and village industries investment limit for tiny industries was raised to 25 lakhs in addition location conditions were improved equity participation by other industry undertakings was permitted up to a limit of 24% of the shareholders in assets A new scheme of integrated infrastructure development SSI was brought up into being with the participation of state governments and financial institutions. A proactive role for non-government organizations, what we call it as NGOs and industry trade associations, was also noticed. To protect the interest of SSI and to move their viability, measures taken by the government from time to time. include the provision of items to be manufactured exclusively by the particular sector and the revision of investment schemes in that definition 
modernization, technology updation, and marketing assistance. Micro, small, and medium enterprise, what we call it as MSPs. Under globalization and advent of information and communication technology, there was a demand from different quarters to club micro, small, and medium enterprises for better performance. The government passed the MSMED, that is an act, in 2006. And then in 2007, subsequent to the amendment of the government of India, which 1961, the Ministry of Small Scale Industries and Ministry of Agro and Rural Industries were merged to form Ministry of Micro, Small and Media Enterprises. The SSIs are including under the Ministry of MSME. In 2014, a new Ministry of Skill Development and Entrepreneurship was set up to achieve the vision of skill. In accordance with the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Act 2006, the enterprises were classified into two divisions, that is manufacturing enterprises, which were engaged in the manufacturing of or production of goods in any industry. And the second was the service enterprises, engaged in providing or rendering services. MS ME Development Act came into existence in 2006, and there was a revision in 2020, and it was in the name of Art Banirbhar Bharat Package, which was actually launched on 13th May 2020. Now, the distinction between manufacturing and service and this has been reversed. Earlier, the limit of investment and turnover for these two were different. You can see that for micro enterprises less than 1 crores and turnover was less than 5 crores. And for small enterprises, it was less than 10 crores and the turnover was 50 crores. And for medium enterprises, it was less than 50 crores and the turnover was less than 250 crores. In the passage, as per the MSCB 2021-22 annual review, Ministry of MSCB runs numerous schemes are uh, in fact different segments, different sectors, such as providing credit and financial assistances, skill development training, infrastructure development, marketing assistance, technological and quality upgradation, and other services for the MSME across the country. Prime Minister's Employment Generation Program, that is MPEGP, the Prime Minister Employment Generation Program was launched during the year 2008-9. To be specific, in September 2008. The scheme aims to generate employment opportunities in rural as well as in urban areas of the country through setting up of new self employment ventures, projects, and micro enterprises. And the maximum cost of the project. Or unit admissible under the manufacturing sectors, it is 25 lakhs, and under business or service sector, it is, it is 10 lakhs. The scheme also focuses to increase the wage earning capacity of artisans and contribute to increase in the growth rate of rural and urban development and employment. Second one is credit priority trust fund. MSI. That is a provision of collateral free credit for MSMEs. The guarantees are provided for extending collateral free lending to and micro and small enterprises to banks and financial institutions. The scheme covers collateral free credit facility, that is, government or working capital, extended by eligible lending institutions to new and existing micro and small enterprises up to 200 lakhs per year. 
The guarantee covers provided under this scheme varies from 50% to 85%, depending upon the quantum of load and the type of the benefit. Third one is a scheme for promotion of innovation, rural industries and entrepreneurship, that is ASPAR. The scheme components are to create a database of technologies available with various governments, private agencies, and set up a network of technology centers for sharing of best practices and experiences. Develop the required skill human resource necessary for maintaining and handholding the incubators. Thirdly, set up livelihood business incubators to provide skill training and incubation support to incubators. Fourth one is to establish a framework for startup promotion through creating a funds of funds with small industry development bank of India, that is SIT India, thereby providing funding support to early stage enterprises and startup in agro-rural sector to convert these into a commercial enterprises. Fourth one is entrepreneurship and skill development program, that is PSD. Entrepreneurship development is the process of improving the skills and knowledge of entrepreneurs, enhancing the capacity to develop, manage, and organize a business venture while keeping in mind the risk associated with it. The objective of the program is to motivate young persons, maybe men or women, representing different sections of the society. And the ultimate objective is to promote new enterprises, build capacity of existing MSMEs and inculate entrepreneurial culture in the country. Fifth one is the scheme for providing financial assistance to cargo institutions under MMDA, that is Modified Market Development Assistance. Government introduced with effect from 1st April 2020, a flexible, growth stimulating and artisan oriented market development assistance scheme in place of the system of free trade. The financial assistance being extended currently under MDAs is at the rate of 30% to the artisans like spinners and weavers engaged in production of cargo and at the rate of 10% to the other workers engaged in cargo production and they will continue to pay. Sixth one is MSME Champions Scheme. Earlier it was CLSPs. Ministry of MSME has been implementing credit linked capital subsidy and technology upgradation scheme for promoting way of waste stage reduction through lean manufacturing, support for design improvement, building awareness on the intellectual property rights. Zero defects, zero defects scheme. Digital empowerment of Amazon through digital Amazon to promote and support untapped capital, creativity of the individuals, and to promote adoption of latest technologies in manufacturing, as well as knowledge based innovation. Amazon through incubation across the India. There are three components under the new Amazon campaign scheme and the details are MSME sustainable that is ready that is zero defect zero effect MSME competitive that is new the third one is MSME innovative that is for incubation idea design and digital MSME Ministry of MSME to an idea GEF projects on promoting market transformation for energy efficiency in micro, small and medium enterprises. The UNIDO GEF promoting market transformation of energy efficiency in micro and small enterprises intends to develop and promote market environment for MSME by introducing 
energy efficient technologies and enhancing the use of and uh, uh, use of identified technologies in the cluster. The program focuses on 10 clusters from seven sectors. They are pulp and paper, textile, food processing, pharma, chemical and dye industry, foundry and forging, and iron and steel. Announcement for MSME sectors in the Union Valley 2023. There is an extension of ECLTS, that is Emergency Credit Line Guarantee Scheme. It was launched amid the COVID 19 pandemic to help MSMEs cope up with pandemic losses and was extended up to 31st March 2020. CGT SMEs for MSME, that is Credit Guarantee Fund Grants for micro and small enterprises, which was jointly set up by Amazon industry and city in 2000 to catalyze the flow of institutional credit to micro and small enterprises. In support, Amazon is facilitating additional credit of rupees 2 lakhs crores for Amazon and expanding employment opportunities. Increasing and accelerating MSME performance program to help the micro, small, and medium enterprises sector became more resilient, competitive, and efficient. Finance Ministry announced the raising and accelerating MSME performance program, which will be rolled out within rupees 6,000 crores out of this program over a period of five years. They wish to develop new products and logistic service for Amazon. Besides introducing a unified logistics interface platform for the logistics sector, they wish to develop new products and efficient logistic services for small and medium enterprises. Administrative and institutional setup. The government of India Government has set up a statutory national board for micro, small, and medium enterprises so as to bring together all the stakeholders as the representative of different subsectors of MSME, policymakers, bankers, and trade unions together to move towards cohesive development of the sector and ultimately to make the sector more competitive and self reliant Security and Exchange Board of India, that is SEBI, to facilitate capital raising by small and medium enterprises. It has been decided to permit listing without an initial public offer, and trading on specified securities of small and medium enterprises, including startup companies on institutional trading platform, that is IT. In SME SMEs. Consequently, amendment can also be made to substantial acquisition of share and share regulation 2011 and SEBI 2009. Capital raising. An ITP listed company must comply following if it wants to raise capital before initiating listing on the platform it should not make any initial public offering rather in conditions private placement or rights issue are sourced through which it can raise issues such companies which raise funds through private placement are required to obtain in principle approval of the recognized stock exchange prior to allotment and should also obtain stakeholders approval. The stakeholders must be taken into profit confidence before a company decides to raise funds through private placements. Industrial policy in operations. An entrepreneur who wishes to set up a small unit of his or her own way, however, like to know 
how the industrial policy is actually implemented. For this, a tentative framework for establishing linkage between some of the following areas is possible. First one is information. An enterprise can be seen from a point of view of an entrepreneur or the institution of the interface. Here, we mainly focus on the institutions of the interface and we will give more emphasis on their activities. The opportunities for self employment can be the areas of manufacturing, trade, and services. Information of self employment based opportunities in any one of the above areas should be available from the following institutions that is, Director of Industry of the State or District Industry Center, State Financial Corporations, particularly small business centers, and nationalized commercial banks and their small business entrepreneurship enterprise departments and State Directorate of Audit Industries. Some states have published from time to time list of bankable schemes for Amazon, which includes detergents, soap, powder, hair oil, engine oil, service from repair shops, etc. That is in for rural areas. And for urban locations, the list includes the option center, nutrition shop, TV service center, furniture design center and many more. The objective for providing such list is that many of the people desirous of taking up self-employment as a positive career order and lacks business information or the basic information on what alternatives are actually available. One of the activities of the interface institution therefore is collecting and disseminating information. Then comes market for the product. Manufacturing small units face the difficulty of marketing their products mainly because of two reasons. That is, several lines in which products of large and small units have to be complete with each other in the market. The present emphasis of policy is to encourage both small scale industry and small businesses will provide self employment opportunities in the first place. Small businesses have limited requirement of plant, machinery, and tools, and most of the financial requirements are met by the nationalized commercial banks. Most of the banks have announced liberalized loan schemes, entrepreneur schemes equity fund schemes and composite loan schemes for artesian based village and cottage industry. Limited liability partnership, that is LLP. Limited liability partnership is an another form of business organization which come into existence through LLP Act in March 31, 2009. It is governed by LLP Act 2008. It is a separate legal entity which continues its existence irrespective of changing partners. LLP permits individual partners to be shielded from joint liability created by another partner's business decision or misconduct. Such an entity provides the flexibility of a partnership and limiting at the same time the bonus liability with respect to the LLP. It is an alternative to corporate business form that gives the benefits of limited liability of a company and the flexibility of a partnership. One of the benefits is that both professional and non-professional businessmen can set up an Then comes association, societies, and NGOs related to MSO. Globalization has offered both opportunity as well as challenges before the MSOs. About 40% of the green exports directly or indirectly are contributed by 
micro, small, and medium enterprises. Some of the AI industries of this sector are IT and legal services, are product of globalization. Other MSMEs are dominant players in India. Major export sectors, namely software, textile and garments, leather products, sports, goods, gems, and jewelry, and handicraft, among others. MSMEs are sharing up and contributing in terms of new slogan, Make in India. MSME sector is competing in the global market and to equip them, not only the government, but also the associations, societies, and NGOs have to contribute positively. The government of India has taken many initiatives to make them more efficient and productive. In addition to government support, there are organizations, societies, and NGOs which also take care of this. I will see how these organizations, which are the different organizations which are associated with this purpose. We just start with the first one is the Associated Chamber of Workers and Industries of India, that is ASO Chair. Their purpose is a not for profit organization which help Indian business houses to interact with the foreign business houses. And the status is that it has 6.3 crores MSME units, which manufactures more than 8,000 products and a share of about 30% in the nominal GDP. Second one is PhD Chamber of Commerce and Industry. It is it acts as an adult catalyst in the promotion of industry, trade, and entrepreneurship. Its motto is Scaling India for Global Competitiveness. Third one is FICI, that is Federation of Indian Chambers of Commerce and Industries. Their purpose is to look after MSME sectors in making their global projects. Fourth one is All India MSMEs Association, that is IMF. They provide information and assistance for the opportunities. NGOs for MSME sectors. NGOs like SAAT and UNIT are imparting training for skill generation among workers and upgradation for self employment in micro sector. UNIT, it is a program of SAAT for enhancing employability through a job related training and placement among youths for vulnerable families across India with the support of American India Foundation and the Municipal Corporation and Gujarat Urban Development Mission. Till now, many youths have been trained under me and many of them have got placements too. Kudan in Rajasthan, South Microsoft Corporation and Rajasthan Mission on livelihoods jointly run to the They have launched a mobile training van in Jodhpur to train youth from rural areas, which trains the youth in car repairing, software development, etc. Udan has placed around thousands of youth in Rajasthan till now. SAT ties up with corporates as well as local business houses for placing trained youth in the formal sector. SAT also provides training to do in areas like business process outsourcing, that is BPO, bedside patient assistance, and customer relations and information technology. Now we move to Unit 5 that comprises of entrepreneurship and economic development. We have a different version for entrepreneurship. But basically, entrepreneurship can be defined as a process of setting up a new business or profession, bearing most of the risk and enjoying most of the rewards. The person or group of people who set up businesses are called 
entrepreneurs. It is setting up a business with small, innovative, and new idea that is directly related to solving some sort of problem in society. Many small manufacturers continue to exist in these economies, showing a skewed distribution of manufacturing enterprises, with the model size being close to the smallest and a long rightward tail stretching towards giants. Most of the small firms are service oriented or produce for a certain client or specialized need in the market. And insulation proceeds, small firms seems naturally to shift from activities that compete with large firms to complementary ones. In India, micro, small, medium enterprises constitute an important and crucial segment of the industrial sector. Amazon contributes a staggering 30% of the country's GDP and around 45% of the manufacturing output and approximately 48% of the country's export. More than 11 crore people are employed in Amazon sector. As of the unique economic and organizational characteristics, Amazon plays an important economic, social and political role in employment creation, resource utilization and income generation. Micro and small enterprises are generally more labor intensive than larger organizations. In India, the focus has been mainly on micro and small enterprises and therefore policies and programs focus more to promote industry rather than the cross factor of the enterprises. Micro, small, and medium enterprises. What is the concept? How does it work? After the government passed the MSMEB Act 2006, it came into for its application, implementation. On 9th May 2007, subsequent to the amendment of the Government of India, allocation of business rule 1961. The Ministry of Small Scale Industries and Ministry of Agro and Rural Industries were much to form the Ministry of Micro and Small Industries. Thus, SSI are included under the Ministry of MSM. In accordance with the Micro, Small and Medium Enterprises Development Act, the enterprises are classified into two divisions. That is, manufacturing the enterprises which are engaged in the manufacturing or production of goods in any industry. And the second one is service enterprises, which are engaged in providing or rendering services. And what for the what are the investment generates? For the manufacturing sector, micro enterprise does not exceed 25 lakhs. And for small enterprises, it is more than 25 lakhs, but it should not exceed 5 lakhs. Medium enterprises, it is 5 crores, but it should not exceed 10 crores. And it is all related to the investment in plant and machine. And the other sector is the service sector. That is, in that sector, investment will no doubt will be on the equipment. And if we talk in terms of micro enterprises, it should not exceed 10 lakhs. For small enterprises, it is between 10 lakhs and 2 crores. And for medium enterprises, it is between 2 crores and 5 crores. After 14 years since MSME Development Act came into existence in 2006, a revision in MSME definition was announced in Artman Neighborhood Parliament by the 13th of May 2020. And the distinction between marketing and service MSCB has been removed. Earlier, the limit of investment and turnover for these two units were different. What are the characteristics and relevance of Amazon? Micro and small medium enterprises have many characteristics which make them pivotal 
in accelerating economic growth. Some of them are their flexibility makes them the best suited to the environment which is constantly changing. These enterprises use new materials, new method of production, new market, new source of material, and even new form of organization, which is continuously innovating in capital. Then comes, since they are fairly labor intensive, MSME provides an economic solution by creating employment opportunities in urban and rural areas. And they also contribute to faster economic growth in a transitional economy. The major benefits of MSME are utilization of locally available human and material resources and expertise or experience, creating jobs at relatively low capital cost, diversifying the industrial structure, preventing the creation of monopolies, ensuring more equitable income distribution, and export-oriented units tends towards a favorable balance of trade. What are the special features of MSMEs? Contribution to GDP. The micro, small, and medium enterprises have been contributing significantly to the expansion of entrepreneurial endeavors through their business innovations. The MSME are widening their demand across sectors of the economy, producing diverse range of products and services to meet demands of domestic as well as global market. Poverty elevation. According to World Bank study, small to medium enterprises sponsors product with an appreciably higher proportion of unskilled workers than medium to large enterprises. It's 65% as compared to about 50%. The creation of unskilled jobs certainly had a direct impact on the alleviation of poverty, which is greater for small and medium enterprises than for large enterprises. Avenues for indigenous entrepreneurship. MSME makes better use of indigenous organizational and management capabilities by drawing on a pool of entrepreneurial talent that is limited in the early stages of the economic development and by producing opportunities for these entrepreneurs to gain experience. MSMEs provide productive outlets for the talents and energies of enterprise. Independent people, and many of whom not, who would not fulfill their potential in large order. With this, we will be concluding the session.